Before I even start, I just want to say rest in peace, Matthew Perry. If you don't know who Matthew Perry is, he was in the hit TV show Friends. I believe his name was Chandler. I've seen about like five to 10 episodes. I'm not the biggest Friends fan. Out of respect for Matthew Perry, I figure I would do this video for him. Top 10 times Matthew Perry broke the Friends cast. Let me just jump into this, see what it's all about, all right? Let's do it. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for moments when Matthew Perry took any extra opportunity to make his castmates and us laugh. <laughs> Number 10, you gotta see this one. For whatever reason, guys seem to have an obsession with the size of certain things. Apparently, Matthew Perry was no exception. On at least two separate occasions, Perry can be heard beckoning Monica to come see what he's just deposited in the bathroom. You guys gotta come see this one. It's certainly not something that they would ever air as part of an episode of the show. Whew, you girls got a measuring tape? But for the actors and the live studio audience, it's certainly a fun opportunity to give a few extra laughs. And no, Chandler, we don't need to see it. Thanks. I mean, you gotta see this. This is like the size of my arm. <laughs> I feel like every guy does that. At least when they were younger. Number nine, falling for Rachel. Say what you want about the Joey and Rachel romance, but it did give us a great little blooper courtesy of our favorite sarcastic friend. <laughs> good for you, that was good for me, Rachel. Yeah. The scene involved Joey leaning on Rachel's door in the hallway after learning she has feelings for him. Rachel opens the door, and Joey falls to the floor. Okay, <laughs> well known for inserting himself into scenes he was not a part of, Perry stands at the door and falls as Rachel opens the door, causing everyone in the scene to break. It's a cute little blooper that shows just how much of a prankster Perry could really be. <laughs> <laughs> Number eight, have you looked in the mirror? For a short period of time, Chandler and Monica had to work through a long distance relationship as Chandler had accepted a job in Tulsa. So when he came home on weekends, they naturally wanted to spend as much time as they could together. Hoping for some private time alone, Chandler secretly flies home and lies to Joey about it. Because I didn't know how to tell him that I couldn't go to the Knicks game, so I just told him I had to stay in Tulsa. So you lied to him? But it's always better to lie than to have the complicated discussion. This leads to an entire plot around Joey thinking Monica is cheating because of how she's dressed. When she tells Chandler that Joey thinks she's a, let's say, promiscuous woman, Perry retorted. That's a good friend right there. His joke is met by both That's laughs a freaking and some G. somber. A lot of friends wouldn't say, they're like, oh, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Nah, Joey, man, that's, if you have a good friend and his girl's cheating on him, tell him right now. That's, that's. That's a good friend right there, man. Oh's from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, putting out fire. Wait, I missed some that. Ways. Have you looked in the mirror? His joke is met by both laughs and some somber oh's from the audience. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven, putting out fire. In some ways, we think this episode should have been called the one where Monica fires Joey. Upset that her coworkers don't take her seriously, Monica hires Joey for the purposes of firing him in front of everyone to show them who's boss. Why don't you fire me? <laughs> That's a good idea. Uh, do you know how to waiter? Good enough to get fired. <laughs> All right, you're hired. The scheme ultimately works, but not before Perry once again inserted himself into a scene he was not in. Monica's uniform is supposed to catch fire slightly, which Joey pats out with his hand on one side of her chest. Oh, oh. What are you doing? You're still a tiny bit on fire there. Oh, good job. Thanks. I think you got it. Perry runs in from off camera and playfully pats out the other side of her uniform before ducking out back behind frame. You're still a tiny bit on fire there. Oh, geez. He's a okay. sly dog. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's a sly dog. He knows what he's doing. It's a funny bit that shows us how comfortable these actors were with each other. Number six, at the camera. 
The fourth wall is a term used in television and film that refers to an imaginary barrier that exists between the scene unfolding in a play, movie, or episode and the audience watching. I can't believe Emma's still asleep. I know. What are we going to do? The characters never look beyond this wall because they're not supposed to know they're being watched by an audience. In this clip, Courtney Cox accidentally looks directly at the camera and then realizes her mistake. Ah. She could be out for a couple days. I can't believe I just looked right at you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just gave a little double take to the camera. When they do the next take, Matthew Perry amplified her mistake purposefully, which brings a pile of laughs. And even another blooper featuring Matt LeBlanc doing something similar. I can't believe Emma's still asleep. I know. What are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Number 5. Somber Boys Directors often have a vision for a particular scene or episode and offer notes to the actors in order to try and fulfill that vision. During one scene in season 3's The One with the Morning After, Joey and Chandler barge into Monica's bedroom in a panic when they hear screaming. <laughs> In the gag reel, immediately following that take, we hear the director ask the two boys to dial it back a little. Go back, go back. <laughs> that, was, that was less. So when they call action and the boys enter, Perry and LeBlanc come in all somber and calm, asking the girls what happened. What's the matter? <laughs> we can't imagine what it was like directing these goofballs. Number four, Bingo Bango. Remember when Monica and Mike had their ping pong competition in Barbados? Well, it turns out there were all kinds of bloopers during that scene. Courtney Cox tripped up a few times, including What's wrong with a moment her hair? when she yells That's out, crazy. and she's supposed to hit a ball. She realizes her mistake, and they go to do another take. Oh, <laughs> this, of course, opens the door for Matthew Perry to step in for his own laughs. As they call action and Monica swings, Perry blurts out some kind of gibberish, which, of course, ruins the take. Bingo, bingo! It gets even better the next time when Cox accidentally throws her paddle. Open! That's because I ran and the table for me! What? <laughs> Number three, huge. The decision for Chandler and Monica to purchase a home to raise their kids outside the city was one that came as a surprise to all of us. So, what'd you think of the house? It's perfect. It's everything we've been looking for. As the two discuss whether or not to buy the home, they both recognize how big of a decision it is and how it's going to affect their friends. The conversation audiences saw had Monica saying, This is huge. In an outtake for the scene, though, she accidentally says, It's huge, which was the perfect cue for Matthew Perry to allude to something else. I think we should. I do, too. Oh, my God. It's huge. Thanks. It is yet another great example of Perry's unmatched improbability. Tell you what, he had a sharp After wit. having been trapped in Monica's bedroom while Ross and Rachel fight over whether they were on a break, Monica, Phoebe, Joey, and Chandler are getting hungry. We could eat the wax. It's organic. Oh, great. Food with hair on it. In a cut scene from the episode, Courtney Cox has a line where she tells everyone she has chocolate bars in her purse in the kitchen. She does this line several times, but keeps getting asked to do it again. Oh, tell me what the note is, because I, I... Okay, good, because I'd keep doing it the same way. When she says the line one last time, Perry chimed in with one of his signature sarcastic quips. I've got two clock bars. We know already. <laughs> Since the final edit of the episode excluded this scene, we're guessing they never did get it right. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring yeah, the bell sure to, to get notified Miss about our latest videos. And subscribe and do all that. Option to be notified like, comment. For this is the last one. Number one, Joey's fall. Joey finally gets his big break and is featured in an issue of Soap Opera Digest. Ever so excited to show someone, he bursts into Central Perk and shows it off to Phoebe. Phoebe, check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. Oh, oh, Soap Opera Digest. Oh, that's one of my favorite digests. Page 42, page 42, okay, page 42. Okay, okay. But Matt LeBlanc struggled to get the scene right several times. On one occasion, he straight up face plants. On another, he looks at his mark on the floor. By the time he finally gets to his chair, it falls over. Check it out, check it out, check it out, check it out. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> like a problem. 
as highlighted in the Friends The Reunion special, Matthew Perry wasn't even in the scene, but mocked his co-star's failures by crashing the scene that might have finally been LeBlanc's good take. And the final time yeah. you came in. Because I was like, somebody's getting a laugh, I can't handle it. <laughs> I, need to get an, I need to get a laugh too. It is pure comedy gold, which we are so do? thankful to be able to see behind the scenes. So <laughs> That Which one's Matthew the best. Perry. Although I didn't really watch the show, I can appreciate Matthew Perry because he is exactly my style of humor. It's such short, quick wit. It's so clear he had it because it just shows, even without a script, he still comes up with these lines and does all this funny stuff. And he just seems like one of those people that you would enjoy being around because he would always have a comeback. He'd always have something sharp to say. And these friends just seemed like they genuinely liked each other. They weren't just playing a role. They actually seem like six best friends. And I guess that's what made the show so popular. Everyone always said it's one of the best shows of all time. I never really got into it, so I, I can't really have an opinion. But I do like Matthew Perry because like the movies and TV shows I've seen of him, especially 17 again, I really did enjoy them. It's so sad that he passed. I wish nothing but the best for him and his family. I'm kind of curious. He genuinely had such a quick wit. I want to know, who do you think had the quickest wit of all time? Let me know if your top three or top five people that had the sharpest wit. They always had a funny comeback. Because this guy might be up there. He's very good. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to smash your like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what I should react to next if you're happy to do it. And take it easy, y'all. I wish you nothing but the best. Till next time.